You use these Italian words in English all the time, but do you actually know what they mean? Well, we're going to find out in today's video. Ciao a tutti, my name is Stefano and I am an Italian teacher. If you're new to the channel, first of all, benvenuto or benvenuta and consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in the Italian language and our beautiful culture. And also, if you appreciate and you would like to support my work, leave a like, that's gonna help me tremendously. In today's video, we're going to look at some Italian words that you use in English, but that in Italian have, let's say, an additional meaning, sometimes a slightly different meaning, but also a very different meaning. So use these words with caution and, uh, well, let's find out what these words are and try to learn these words because, I mean, you're studying Italian, so you probably want to know what these words mean. Well, the first word I have for you is bravo. Bravo. So I know that in English you pronounce it as bravo, but in Italian we roll our R's, so we say bravo, bravo. Now remember that in Italian bravo is an adjective and actually bravo is masculine singular. If you want to use bravo with a woman then you're going to say brava and for the plural you're going to have bravi, masculine plural, and brave, feminine plural. So just saying bravo, well, doesn't always work in Italian because you gotta change it accordingly. So for example, let's say your sister is very good at singing and so she sings a song for you. At the end of the performance, you want to say something like brava, brava, okay? Now, even though we do use bravo in the same way, so at the end of like an event, a performance, to just say that people were very good at what they were doing, bravo actually also means good. But it's not just good, it actually means to be good at something. So for example, I could say, io sono bravo a spiegare l'italiano. Io sono bravo a spiegare l'italiano. I'm good at explaining Italian. Or, I miei fratelli sono bravi a disegnare. I miei fratelli sono bravi a disegnare. My siblings are good at drawing. Now in Italian, remember to put the preposition a after bravo if you want to say that someone is good at something. Now let's talk about another expression that you have in English that, let me tell you, actually we don't use very often in Italian. I'm talking about al fresco. Al fresco. Now I know that in English al fresco dining is a beautiful thing, but actually al fresco doesn't mean to have lunch or dinner outside in Italian. Not at all. This is because if you want to say outside in Italian, you're going to say fuori. Fuori. So if you would like to dine outside, you're just gonna say cenare fuori or pranzare fuori or even better just mangiare fuori, but we're not going to say al fresco. Now, the expression al fresco in Italian actually means something completely different. Even though the word fresco itself means fresh in Italian, the expression al fresco means something completely different. It actually means jail, to go to jail. Now I think that this expression is a bit old-fashioned because I rarely hear this expression in real life, but I mean, it exists. So for example, you could say a quel ladro farà bene stare al fresco. A quel ladro farà bene stare al fresco. That means going to jail will be good for that thief. So yeah, I mean, just don't use al fresco in Italy. If you want to eat outside, just say mangiare fuori and that's going to be much easier. Now I know that in English you also use the word fiasco. Fiasco. Yes, in Italian it's actually the same thing. We would refer to a very bad performance or something that went very bad as a fiasco. But besides being a complete failure, we would also use the word fiasco in Italian to describe a specific container for wine. I don't own one of them, but I've seen them sometimes. So yeah, a fiasco is also that. Now in English, I know that you also have the word finale. Finale. Now be very careful with the pronunciation. It is not finale, no. You want to pronounce that 
e at the end. Finale. Finale. This word in English is very specific because it refers to the final episode of a series or the last part of a movie event, I think. But in Italian, the word finale also means final. Yes, it is an adjective, so you could also use it to just say final. But we do use finale also, for example, for TV series. We say finale di stagione. Let me give you some examples with finale as final. For example, la parola finale spetta al direttore. La parola finale spetta al direttore. Or, questa è la nostra decisione finale. Questa è la nostra decisione finale. Now I also know that you have the word scenario. Scenario. So it's not scenario, but it's sce Scenario, scenario, scenario. This word has a very specific meaning in English because I know that it's also something like a plot outline or a possible situation. Now, we do not have the first meaning because if we want to say like a written plot outline in Italian, we would use the word canovaccio. It is a very specific word. But we do use the word scenario when we're talking about a possible situation. But also remember that scenario in Italian also means view, landscape. So, for example, if I go to Terrazza Michelangelo, as I did in one of my vlogs in Florence, and I look at the view that is beautiful, I might say something like, oh, è un bellissimo scenario, like it's a beautiful scenery, a beautiful landscape. Now, if you've been studying Italian for a while, you probably know this word already, but let's go over the word solo, solo. So I know that in English you use this word just when you're talking about, for example, a singing performance, so a solo. But in Italian, that is actually called a solo. A solo. For example, questo brano è una solo. Questo brano è una solo. But when we have the word solo, we have several meanings. For example, it might be just, or only, or alone, lowly. Let, let's look at a few examples. The first example that I have for you is C'è solo uno studente. C'è solo uno studente. There's only one student. Or La ragazza è sola a casa. La ragazza è sola a casa. The girl is alone at home. Mi sento solo, mi fai compagnia? Mi sento solo, mi fai compagnia? I feel lonely. Will you keep me company? And now let's talk about another very, very famous word. Opera. Opera. So, of course, opera is the singing performance that we all know around the world. But opera also means work or an artwork, a piece of art. I could also use it for books. For example, le opere di Manzoni sono molto interessanti. Le opere di Manzoni sono molto interessanti. Manzoni's works or Manzoni's books are very interesting. Questa opera del Brunelleschi è stata recentemente restaurata. Questa opera del Brunelleschi è stata recentemente restaurata. This work by Brunelleschi was recently restored. Now, let's talk about another word that you use all the time. Panini. Panini. Now, I've got a question for you. Why do you use it plural? Well, of course, I mean, even though panini is, well, sandwich in Italian, why do you use it plural? Why don't you just say panino? Panino. Well, the word got there in some way, so it entered the English vocabulary in some way, but uh, panini is plural in Italian. So if you want to say one sandwich, it's going to be panino. If you want to say multiple sandwiches, then you're going to say panini. But yes, the meaning is the same. And now we got the word pasta. Pasta. And I know, I know you're thinking, oh, this is a trick. There is no way pasta means something else in Italian. Well, I mean, of course, pasta is pasta, but pasta actually means also something else. In Italian, we'll use pasta also to describe pastry and a dough. Prendo una pasta alla crema. Prendo una pasta alla crema. 
I'll get a cream puff pastry. And now let's talk about the final word of today. Confetti. Confetti. Confetti and confetti are two different things. Absolutely. Your confetti is our coriandoli. But our confetti is your... Uh, I don't know? I mean, I don't think they exist, but they're kind of like a sugared almond or something like that. They usually come in different colors and are usually given as a small gift at like weddings or, for example, graduation parties from university. But I'm not really sure you know what they are because I don't know if they exist outside of Italy. Maybe just let me know in the comments below. Okay, we are done with the words for today. Do you know any other word, Italian word, that you use in English that actually Italian means something else? If you do, just let me know in the comments below. And also maybe let me know if you liked the video and if you did, leave a like because that's gonna be very helpful and also subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future video. Okay, so we are done for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next lesson. Ci vediamo nella prossima lezione. Ciao! Ciao!